Hi guys, the following video deals with firearms and as such, please apply all your applicable firearm laws, safety precautions, uh, regulations, and everything else for your area and your jurisdiction. I am not a firearm safety instructor or any sort of professional in that manner, so please take all this as entertainment and do so at your own risk. Please follow the laws and regulations and even if you don't need to, take the training that's available in your area. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Bushcraft North of 60. I'm glad you came out to join us here. Today I'm going to take a long-term uh, look and review at my Henry H001T Frontier Lever Action 22 rifle. So stick around, it's sure to be a good one. Okay, so first off, a few specs on the rifle itself. It is chambered for 22 short, long, and long rifle. I've fired shorts and long rifle. I haven't found any longs and I haven't been too worried about it honestly, but it's reliably fed both. I put a lot more long rifle through it, but I have put a few bricks of uh, short through it as well. And the only issues I had, it was brand new when I did it almost two years ago with the shorts, is the last round would sometimes have problems feeding up into it, but uh, I've never had that with anything else. It could have even just been that one particular brand and manufacturer of uh, ammo they tried in it. Yes, chambered and 22 long rifle, long short and long rifle. It's a lever action rifle. It has some marble semi buckhorn sights on it so you've got a brass bead on the front that can be drifted left or right for windage and you've also got a, a leaf type uh, spring here on the back that runs a ramp for elevation but you can also drift this one which is the one they recommend so I would just center this guy here and uh, work with the back one but it has about six ramps in it what I tend to do though is just sight it in at a comfortable distance that I'm usually target shooting or hunting at if I can say there's a distance you would normally hunt at but then I'll sight it in for that and rather than play around with the ramp I'll just get used to where it hits and then uh, do a little bit of holdover or Kentucky elevation on it just because there's times if uh, in the past I've set it to one setting and been taking longer shots with it and put it back away when I was done didn't think about it come back out and go to take a shot at an animal and next thing you know I'm shooting way high or way low so now I just set it and forget it and just keep familiar with where the rifle actually hits so it is a lever action, and we're going to make sure it's clear and safe again here. Nothing in the chamber, nothing hiding in the action. You can see the follower. And I'm looking at my bolt through the muzzle end down the breech so it's clear. Put it on half cock, and that's our safe direction for all intents and purposes today. So yeah, it's a lever action rifle. When you cycle the lever, the bolt comes back here and pushes the hammer back. And at the same time, your, uh, your follower pushes around into your elevator and comes up into the breech. And the bolt strips that off, pushes it into the battery, and then your hammer is back. It doesn't have an external safety on it, but it has what's called a half cock safety. So keeping pressure on this with your thumb so that it doesn't fall ahead to the bolt, you're going to want to disengage it. Take your finger off the trigger and allow this to come to a rest. With this particular rifle, it's going to look like it's still up against the bolt, but it's not. And the way you can find that out is if I ease this just up against the firing pin, and it is empty, we just checked it, but still keep it in a safe direction. Watch the trigger and listen. That's your half cock. So, same thing, I'm going to bring that here, and then looking at... Uh, the hammer here I've got about three millimeters from the tightest point of the notch to the bolt so in the future if this is cocked I want to put it on half cock if I see about that three millimeters there that means I'm good to go so it's lever action tube fed so in order to load it you've got a port here in the tube magazine and you've got some knurling on the end of this brass rod there's a rubber o-ring and then you've got a catch here so what you're going to do is kind of push down on it and twist it until it comes out. And then, some people take it right out. I rarely do, honestly. And you can just load your rounds in here. The H001T, which has a 20-inch barrel on it, will hold 17, 16 rounds of uh, 22 long rifle. And I think it's 21 of 22 short, which is nice. I mean, the only reason I used 22 short in the past would have been just for plinking with targets or bird hunting actually isn't too bad for shooting grouse and ptarmigan on the ground. 
uh, for headshots. The 22 short is all you're going to need for that. So works great. So you got a tube-fed magazine. This one features the octagonal barrel on it. Hopefully you can see that. It's got a really nice bluing on it. I mean, I've got some fingerprints on it right now, but because I use fluid film on my gun, they wipe right off and they don't go into the metal like you would with some oils. So you've got an octagonal barrel. So you've got real American hickory, they call it, stock and forend. You've got a nice metal barrel band that goes around the forend here. And the magazine is actually dovetailed into the barrel on the frontier. If you had the regular classic or the H001, you'd have a round barrel, kind of like you see on most 3030 hunting rifles. And you'd have another barrel band up here. But in this case, it's cleaned up a little bit. It gives it that sort of cowboy frontier look. It does have a plastic butt plate on the back that has Henry's name in it. And there's a little secret under this butt cap. I'll show you in the tips and tricks here in a little bit. Other than that, I mean, you'll find all this on Henry's website and every other video, but uh, just to recap, it has an alloy receiver, and this is actually the receiver cover. So anytime I take this apart to, to clean it or to work on it, you've got two screws on each side. You've got one back here that holds the stock on. I pull the stock out, slide the receiver back, your bolt comes off, and then you can get right into your receiver and clean all that up. So it's a fairly simple rifle to work on if you're mechanically inclined and comfortable with that sort of thing, but I'm not going to recommend it because, uh, yeah, all that stuff is do at your own risk sort of thing. But I'm not uncomfortable doing it. We'll put it that way. It's not, to me, a difficult rifle to work on by any means. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, honestly. There's not much to them or about them other than they're a really sturdy, reliable, smooth, accurate rifle. And that's what I really like about it. This thing's definitely really good at putting uh, rounds on target. I've been shooting the last, oh, almost 3,000 rounds, I guess, through it, just using Remington uh, Golden Bullets. They're not a super awesome round. They're your typical cheap sort of bulk ammo. So, yeah, consistency might not be great. I was getting a few uh, misfires in the winter, but I think I've attributed that more to just, uh, well, I can even show you here, your firing pin starts at the back of your bolt and goes up to the, the face of it where it goes against the breech and strikes the edge of your uh, primer on your rim fire. I think it might have been a little bit of excess lube there that when it got really cold and the hammer hit it, it was a little tacky. It wouldn't allow that to come ahead as fast as it would. Or, who knows, maybe the ammo just doesn't like the cold. But I haven't had any problems other than that. And I think I've had maybe three, four misfires. So it can't be too bad in ammo, I guess. But this is one dandy little rifle. I'll show you a couple things I've done to it, a couple things I've learned about it here. Hopefully that'll help you out with your purchasing decisions, or if you've already got one of these and love it, maybe it'll help you enjoy it even more. So one thing I've done to uh, the lever on mine, this is just a regular loop lever. You can also get a big loop lever, which is kind of nice. I wouldn't mind having one of those, honestly, for, for gloves doing some wintertime work. But I've wrapped this in a little bit of alkyde, just tanned alkyde that I had left over from some things. If you're doing a lot of target shooting, or uh, up here the shooting club does, what do they call it, cowboy silhouette shooting, which is kind of cool. I wanted to get into that, but still haven't yet. But if you're doing a lot of repetitive firing over and over and over again, this starts to bite into your knuckles. And if it's not really cool enough to wear gloves comfortably, then that's kind of a pain. You can wear gloves if you want to be cool, I guess. But, but what I did was just wrap that up, and now that's... That doesn't bother my fingers at all anymore. It's perfect. So that's all a guy could ask for with that. Another thing I'll let you guys in on with the Henry rifles, everybody complains, unless there are into Henry's, complains about this tube-fed magazine, especially on their center fire stuff. There's pluses and negatives to that. I found uh, with my center fire rifles, if I'm hunting and don't shoot anything, all of a sudden you've got to eject every single round by feeding it into the breech and then back out of the breech, it's still a live round and out the ejection port, which is a couple of things. One, every time that's chambered in there is technically a possibility you could have a, a discharge. I mean, you probably won't if you're following gun safety, but it's just one more variable there that you don't really need to have with the Henry's, which is nice. The other thing is between, especially if you're using soft point bullets, if you're feeding those in and they're getting a little mangled up and then you're cycling them through when you get back to your vehicle or back to where you need to case up your firearm, if you look at your bullet tips, they're going to start getting deformed. And when your bullet tip is deformed, you're going to start getting bigger and bigger groups. It's going to open up on you and lose a little bit of accuracy. 
with the Henry when you get back to your vehicle and you check and make sure it's clear, which we've already done. You pull your magazine uh, tube faller out and just dump your rifle down, muzzle end down, and all your rounds come out of your hand. And we'll probably see that here when we do some firing demonstrations. And the rod is made of brass, which is nice. I've seen a lot of people on the internet with these brass rods uh, a little tarnished up. And you can use brasso on them. Same thing I use on the rest of my firearm pretty much is just uh, fluid film. It smells like wet sheep, but does it ever work? And I've never had a problem with this not wanting to go in. On the end, uh, hopefully you guys can see this O-ring here. There's an O-ring on the end of this that basically works to keep a little bit of tension or compression fit on this so that when it goes in, hopefully you guys can see this. See how that rides up just a little bit higher than that notch? You've got to deform that O-ring enough to get that to fit in there. It's great when it works. One thing I have found, two things I've found now actually, with the tube uh, magazine on this, is one time I was pulling the gun out of the bag and I was already out in the bush, and when I pulled it out, and I don't know if it was because the O-ring was just starting to wear or if it didn't cooperate with some of the lubes I used to use, but it pulled the O-ring off, I didn't notice it, went down in the brush and never found it. Which you wouldn't think would be a huge deal, but it doesn't just give this some rattle, this will actually disengage and your follower will come right out the magazine and all your rounds are gonna be spilled out in front of you. And if you happen to be over water or a deep trench or something where that happens, you're probably going to lose your follower as well, your rod. So there's a couple things with that. Uh, one thing, it is, if I remember this right, it's a 7 16th outside diameter, 5 16th inside diameter. So it's a 1 16th thickness rubber O-ring. You can get those at any hardware store, which is nice. Um, I did. Speaking of the butt cap here, if you carry a Swiss Army knife or a multi-tool with you, let's just take a peek in here and see what I've got hiding. And once again, don't do this with a loaded firearm. Ensure it's clear and empty before you do this. And preferably no mosquitoes. So you should never carry a firearm without a multi-tool in my opinion. So, see if we can do this without dropping anything here, without muzzle sweeping my leg. If you look inside, see that honeycomb sort of finish on the butt plate? Well, we'll pick those up in a second. That honeycomb finish, that's the perfect size to hold at least two on each side of those O-rings. So I've got four for backup here in the field. If I ever lose one of those again, I'm ready and prepared to pop another one. Especially if you're, I don't know, if it took you a day to get to where you're hunting or where you're camping and all of a sudden you pull your gun apart and you've lost or damaged that O-ring, it's good to have backup and it's always with the gun. And today's Swiss Army knife is the Victorinox Soldier Alox. This one is a 2003 model. Actually, it's a basically, I guess you'd call it a 1961 model, but this one's stamped 2003. I'll just put this butt plate back on. Another issue that you might find with this O-ring is cold weather. So it might not be as big a deal on the center fires because you've got a bigger tube, but with the 22 and with gloves on, sometimes it's kind of hard to deform that rubber and bring it over and lift it up. Now I will say, once again, this isn't the original O-ring. The original factory O-ring from Henry may be better, maybe worse. I don't really remember because that fell out before the first winter, but uh, keep that in mind. You could probably go to a hydraulic shop or some other similar shop that sells a lot of seals and o-rings with those sizes and find something that's maybe a little cold weather friendly or a different material. There might be a quad ring or something out there that could back that up a little better. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the Henry in a nutshell. I absolutely love this rifle. Uh, if, if Henry's out there listening to this or watching this, thank you very much for producing this rifle. It's made me want to move on to some more models. 
And my next Henry rifle that I'd be looking at getting is most likely going to be a 4570 and probably just in a steel finish because it's a little more, I don't want to say a little more rugged, but it's a little less worrisome as far as finish goes and keeps the price down as well. But I'm a blue and steel kind of guy. Blue steel, wood furniture, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Enough gabbing about it. Let's try it out and take a few shots. All right, so I'm going to thank my brother-in-law for getting these for me, just as a uh, little present. But these are the Birchwood Casey Target Spots that are self-adhesive stickers. They're pretty cool. I've put them on my uh, swinging target here, but I've already done a number on them. I've got all kinds I can refill with there. So, we're going to need some ammo. And before we load our ammo, we're going to need some safety. So, we've got our PPE, we've got eye protection. And I had somebody comment on one of my videos, oh, you're using ear protection with a 22? Well, there's two reasons. One, why not? I mean, it's not terribly loud or anything, but if it can save my hearing a little bit, especially I've already done enough shooting that I am kind of inclined to say you should really have these because uh, the amount that I haven't, I'm kind of regretting it now. So long story short, wear your ear protection. So we've got our PPE, we've got our ammo, we've got a firearm. It's our safe direction, so I'm going to run the action a few times, make sure nothing's in the magazine, nothing's in the chamber, nothing's hiding in the action, and I have no obstructions in my barrel. So I'm going to, like I say, put this on uh, safe, which in this case is the half cock. Keep this in a safe direction and get my gear on. Another little plug here. I just bought these with my own money, but these are uh, Walker's Razor, they're called. These are an electronic noise suppressing headphone set. So basically, this still allows me to hear, which is nice. But as soon as I take a shot, it cancels the noise out right away and then comes back on when the noise is over. So the nice thing is not only can I still hear what's going on, but it actually amplifies what's going on. And with the two directional microphones on it, when I turn my head, it's not the most accurate, but you can still kind of hear where sound is coming from. So They're pretty cool. They're actually nice for bird hunting. If you're going to be taking a lot of shots with a shotgun, especially in my case, it's a 19 and a half inch barrel. So it's, uh, it's making a loud boom kind of close to your head. So it holds 16. I'm only going to take 15 out because I just unveil three rows of them. And once again, so keep your hand out of the direct front of the muzzle if you can help it. The only thing about the Henry's you definitely have to play it safe with. Make sure you're not muzzle sweeping your hand and make sure your rifle is not loaded before you go and load your rifle. So that's one plus, I guess, that the loading gate on, say, a Winchester or a Marlin or a Rossi or one of the other guys would have on them. But I still don't mind. I like it. It's not a tactical weapon. It's a sporting firearm. And speaking of making sure it's clear, I have had this happen once where the weapon sh weapon <laughs> firearm should have been empty but then doing my check I had a round pop out it was the last one up against the follower so really really check well to make sure that it isn't loaded so there we go now we have a firearm ready to send some lead down range so let's do that now hopefully you guys can see our target down there we've got a uh, swinging resettable target we've got a good backstop in behind it we've got a safe direction beyond that even and we're just going to double check and make sure nothing's on or around the range that we don't want to have interfere. And then we'll take some shots.
It is a sweet shooter. Okay, now speaking of O-sound and hearing protection and things like this, here's an interesting fact with these little uh, muffs here. They aren't canceling out my 22, so chances are good it's probably safe to listen to unprotected. I'm not going to, and I'm not going to recommend it. But that's just kind of interesting, so I've got some pretty soft background here. It's not bouncing a lot of noise back to me. When I'm in tight tree and uh, rock sort of situations, it does cancel them, so it does tell me that uh, they probably needed to at that point in time. But kind of a cool little... Uh, byproduct here so I'm still hearing the uh, the report from this through the speaker so for all it's worth I'm gonna keep them on It never gets old with this thing. Never. Love it. Okay, so another little trick I want to share with you guys. Field cleaning, or even when you get home cleaning. But the nice thing with this is you can do this super, super quick before you go back home. So you've got your firearm. And we're going to make sure that this isn't loaded. And it's safe. Which it is, so that's good. So you've got a safe firearm. Now, if you've got, say, a bolt action or, well, like a, a single shot rifle or a few other different actions out there that you can basically clean it from your breech end out to the muzzle, it's not going to be as big a deal. But, here's the but with the lever action, you can't easily, and I know you Marlin guys are going to say, oh, it's not hard. Without some minor disassembly, you can't easily use a cleaning rod in here because the receiver captures pretty much everything on the, the breech end and you're not really supposed to clean it from muzzle to breech you're supposed to clean it from breech to muzzle so i know guys that do that too they'll put a rod down this way and back and forth or whatever but uh, there's an easier way now for you marlin guys which i happen to also be a marlin owner in some of their models you can just take the screw out of the lever drop the lever down pull the bolt out and then you can just clean it like a bolt gun but even on my Marlin, I don't uh, clean it that way. What I do, make sure we got this pointed down here. I've got one of these boar snakes. These are slick as snot on a chicken's lip. Uh, they're well worth the few dollars that they cost. And most of you guys probably know about these, but what you've got, you have pull string that's weighted with a brass weight and it'll have your caliber on it too this one is 22 which isn't just for 22 rim fire but uh 223 or anything like that that's basically a 22 caliber projectile and now one thing i didn't notice with mine it started to uh, come apart here so i just stitched in between this string and my uh, flossing end and it's been fine ever since for years but then you've got this wipe which kind of imitates a patch you've got some copper bristles here one two three sets of those for cleaning out your lands and your grooves and then it's going to continue wiping with this and it's almost like your patch I guess on the end and what I do is just put a few drops of your oil of choice on here and I even use fluid film on my bore uh, just enough to uh, wipe it down you don't want to soak it obviously and you still want to wipe it out before you fire but it does prevent rust very very well so all you need to do Take your safe firearm that you've checked and made sure it's clear. And I just leave this bunched up in my hand usually, or if I'm home, I just do it on the bench. It's a lot easier. Don't let this touch the ground because you're going to pull dirt through your firearm. But the weighted end just goes through your breech and feed it down the barrel. Now when it comes out, don't just pull it on any angle because you can actually destroy your crown just even with this on it, the little bit of dirt that might be on there and friction can uh, ruin the finish on your crown. So always, always pull that in a straight line with your barrel. So I'm holding it straight until it comes up to this plastic piece. And there's two ways you can do it. 
you can do it like that way. I just forced it in with my finger, or if you hold the firearm up, like I say, if I'm keeping this uh, off the ground, I've got to hold it up quite far, which is going to make this difficult for the first bit. I'm going to pull this up. My brush is already in. Patch part is in. And I should have a fairly clean board just with one swipe. You can give that a few passes while you're packing up at the range and locking everything up again. And even just for hunting, so I mean at the range you can probably take just about everything with you, especially if you can park your car right there and don't have to hike in real far. And this I just scrunch up, don't wind it up because that'll get so tangled up on you. And the lube of my choice, which is fluid film, which I use on all my metal and leather stuff. Well, now it kind of looks like somebody hawked a loogie into this rag. But yeah, so I just keep a, uh, a clean cotton rag just to give this gorgeous thing a wipe when I'm done. Now with the Henry, what you like to uh, get in the habit of doing as well is to pull out the rod and give that a wipe as well for two reasons. I wipe it pretty good. I don't wipe a lot of the excess off. Just kind of give it one wipe because that's also going to coat the inside. So unlike a lot of the rifles with tube magazines where you have to take this apart to get at it. You can once in a while even run a patch down there with some oil and clean it out, keep the rust from building up in there and doing nasty things. So yeah, I just wipe her all down and I gently clean my crown just in a circular sort of fashion there with even pressure so that doesn't get caked on over time. And with the fluid film, I can do pretty much every part of this firearm. The receiver, even though it's not blued, I like to keep that dressed up nice and keep the rust off of it. Once in a while, the leather here, I'll even soak that with the stuff and it'll penetrate through and keep that from getting messy underneath. And even the wood, this will keep it from getting uh, dirty and scratched. And you should see the water beat up on this thing. I do this every time I use it so it stays protected quite well. Yeah, that might be a handy trick for you just to keep this little bag of goodies in your kit. And just in case I forgot, that's the dimensions for that O-ring that goes on the end of the magazine tube. So that's my lovely little Henry. So if you guys are into shooting sports or if you want to get into it, first off, follow all the rules and regulations and laws in your particular locale. And uh, hopefully you can find something like this in your local stores. Mine retailed for... I want to say it was just over $600 at Canadian Tire almost two years ago. But to me, it was well, well worth it. This is the first new firearm I've ever bought myself. Uh, I've had some used ones and been given some used ones. But this was my first new firearm. And this is definitely a keeper. And for one thing, it's a gorgeous firearm. And secondly, I've got some really good memories with this. I've taken a lot of small game with this just in the last couple of years even. So grouse, ptarmigan, squirrel, uh, snowshoe hare. And a lot of cans have met their demise with this. So, Thank you guys for coming out here and joining me. It's not a real bushcrafty episode of Bushcraft North of 60, but I just figured it's such a, a fine firearm that deserves a little bit of accolades from me here. And Yeah, just a great little firearm. So guys, thanks for joining me on my uh, long-term review and tips and tricks on the Henry H001T Frontier Lever Action Rifle. I'll see you guys here again next time in the Northwest Territories. Until then, you guys take care and safe shooting.